fourth round. Round number one, they both come out swinging. And they nearly had a clash of heads in the very first exchange. Sanchez is very, uh, well, usually a slow starter. He usually likes to size up his opponent, kind of break them down bit by bit. He gets off to a slow start and usually comes on. Perez, the former IBF junior bantamweight world champion, native Colombian, was the Colombian flyweight champion as a very young fighter. Now fighting in the junior featherweight division. I guess the last real good fight for Polo in terms of getting a win, he's still fought other uh, very good fighters since then, but in terms of getting a win or a draw, he did have a draw with Victor Polo, who's a top-ranked uh, contender right now, and he fought uh, in 97. He had uh, the draw with Polo. Since then, he's still fought a, a number of uh, well-known people like uh, Cesar Soto, former world champion, Wayne McCullough, and uh, Levander Johnson, but hasn't been able to beat them, although he did beat uh, Angel Rosario, so a good win on his ledger there. What is a guy who's been in there, uh, how many, 14 times with world champions? Yeah, he's got over 70 professional fights, does Perez. Just, a, you know, a solid journeyman at this stage. He won that world championship way back in 1989, Barry, uh, against El Elias Pical. He won a unanimous decision to win the IBF 115-pound uh, title. But, you know, you're in a much, much better weight, to, much bigger weight to be in right now. He's become a stepping stone type of fighter, but he's still dangerous enough and savvy enough that given the right set of circumstances, especially against the guy who's on his way up like Sanchez, uh, stranger things have happened than for Perez to win this. Yeah, well, there, and there's a question with Sanchez if he's really still on his way up because he did lose the world title to Nestor Garza and was really unimpressive in that fight that we showed you the highlights of a few moments ago against uh, Medina. So, I think there's some question mark about Sanchez if he is still going to continue to develop at this stage of his career. He's not a youngster, you know. He's 28 years old. First round after a flurry of action right at the opening bell has settled down here. No real damage of any sort from either fighter. punches by Sanchez. The way it's worked with Perez in recent years is if he fights a club fighter, he beats him. If he fights a, a pretty good fighter, he can usually go the distance with him but lose the decision. If he fights a real banger or a real world champion type, he's going to probably get KO'd, although he did go the distance with McCullough. So where does this one fall? Well, again, that depends on Sanchez at this point. I think Sanchez is in that very good fighter category right now. End of the first round. And, uh... Sean O'Grady has joined us ringside. Not much to choose in the first round, we thought, Sean. No, more of a feel them out round. You know, you have two solid pros like this. And in these pro fighters, they usually don't get started until the third or fourth round. Muscles get all warmed up. They get the punches out of them, get the butterflies gone. Does a guy like Perez, you think, really have butterflies after he's had 70 pro fights? No, in fact, he was back in the back asleep when I went <laughs> back there. I think they had to go wake him up to get him out here to fight. You know, when you're such a solid pro like that, these are the kind of fighters that I really idolized when I was coming up. I mean, he really knows what he's doing. He, he, in, the, in the ring, this is like, like his home. Well, don't they always say, I mean, you kid about being asleep, but a relaxed fighter is a good fighter relaxed before the fight. There were several fights that I fell asleep before I went into the ring, and some of them that I fell asleep when I was in the ring. Did I, did I, <laughs> did I tee you up high enough for that? That's why I'm over here sitting with you guys now. <laughs> and still falling asleep, right? No, but it's so true because there are so many fighters who get so relaxed preceding the fight that they just nod off. And you can't allow that to happen. In a fight like this, I would have thought that Sanchez would have come out real early, jumped right on Perez because Perez is a slow starter. You know, I think he tried to, actually, but I think Perez met him with that same kind of challenge, and after that, they both kind of backed off. You know, I did a number of uh, Sanchez's early fights when he was fighting around the Los Angeles area at the Forum and in uh, Las Vegas on the way up to the championship. 
and he looked like a really, a really tremendous contender at that point. I just think he's kind of hit a flat spot in his career here where he's basically stopped developing. And the question is, is if he can continue to get better at this point to regain championship form. You know, Rich, you see so many fighters who have such great potential, and then all of a sudden, one punch, it stops. And it ceases because all of a sudden they know they can be hit, they can be hurt, and they don't, they, they before that, they go in with reckless abandonment. They go in there and try to just barrel over their opponent when they get hurt different story. Well, Dude, a lot of fighters, and we've mentioned this a number of times on the show, but uh, a lot of fighters will say, I never know how good I'm going to be until I lose. Absolutely. You learn so much more from your losses than ever you're, than you do from your victories. Sanchez has, says that his style is to be strong in the ring. He can also box, he says. His best punch is the, the left cross. For Perez, he says he's an aggressive boxer. We haven't seen that. So I go right after them uh, due to my height. And they're mixing it up there. First flurry of the fight, really, for Sanchez. But Perez was challenged and he answered back. Perez has been trying to counter and has done so uh, with some success. End of round two. On 10 rounds, Junior Wilder waits. At least they're not asleep. Well, they're waiting. He's very good. <laughs> good right hand. Yeah, Perez came out immediately more aggressive here in this round, and uh, he got that right hand home. It was a clean shot. For the veteran professionals, the fight starts at three when you're talking about a 10-rounder. It's a 12-rounder, it doesn't start at the fourth. But here they are in this third round. They're heating up. Perez has drawn a little blood from the nose of Sanchez. Happened a little bit in the last round, too, but again early here in round three. Sprung a leak. Juan Polo Perez, who was the 1981 World Cup champion in Montreal. 1981. You were a baby then, which was some time ago. He went 120 in the amateur ranks before turning professional. Sanchez got into boxing because he once tried to break up a fight between his friend and another guy. He says, I KO'd my, the other guy, not my friend, but the other guy, decided I needed to be a boxer. He mentioned his last fight of his amateur career, fought Marco Antonio Barrera, defeated Barrera. In fact, it was the last amateur bout for each guy, and he knocked Barrera down in that fight. But really, as a professional, it is uh, Barrera who has gone on to greater heights than has Sanchez, even though they were both uh, ended their amateur careers at about the same time. Barrera, far more fights, far more greatness uh, that he has exhibited so far in the ring. And you've given the first two rounds to Sanchez. Yeah, both close rounds, I thought. More pressure this round from right. Sanchez. Southpaw stands quite difficult to find the holes, find the opening in their defense. The punches come at you from different angles. Your punches are delivered at different angles. I have to think that that would not bother Perez too much over the course of 70 odd fights. We'll just take a look at the lineup of the world champions. I'll just give you their last names because there's so many, but Paez, Soto, McCullough, Lorsi, Bredal, Ahmed, Oledwaba, Medina, Vasquez, Canado, Quiroga, Cardona, Rojas, and Zapata. I saw his fight with, uh, with many of these uh, champions. The one that he really disappointed in was the fight with Hamid. In that fight, he just completely froze up. He did nothing for two rounds and was knocked out easily by Hamid. He just seemed to be totally mesmerized by Nassim in that fight and did not have a, a clue of how to go about trying to go against that weird style of the Prince. That's happened to many fighters against Nassim Hamid. You know, it continues to happen. Coming to the end of round number three, and uh, again, pretty evenly matched fight. Welcome back into Nightly at 10 and 12. It's the National Sports Report. That's the show that gives you a complete wrap-up of all the day's sports news, of internet interaction, scores and highlights, opinions and analysis. It's the National Sports Report. It's Nightly at 10 and again at 12, only on Fox Sports Net. Round four between Enrique Sanchez and Juan Polo Perez. Perez in the black trunks with the red stripe. Sanchez black with the gold trim. And a caution to Perez to keep the punches up. 
Perez, what a warrior. Over 70 bouts. Question with a guy like this is just what, will he get used up at some point? I gave him that last round based on that right hand that he landed in the opening seconds, Barry. I, I don't normally give a round to a guy based on one punch, but it was the biggest punch of the fight, really, and it uh, got certainly got to Enrique's attention. Yes, it did. Paris. He's not like a, some of these aging champions who are just kind of let themselves go and try to get by on ring savvy. He does come in here appearing to be fit. That was a good left hook that time by Sanchez. He's trying to square up to the left-hander Sanchez and land his right hand. Hasn't been too successful really doing it. Nice combination by Paris. Nothing big, but he got there with the left hand and a right yeah, and the blood getting to be look a little more dramatic coming out of the nose of Sanchez. Another straight right hand by Perez. so that they could get immediate uh, attention to him. You can see that Enrique still bleeding from the nose. Let's see if we can see what happened here, Rich. Perez was walking in, coming in, really having a good round. Well, again, it looks like kind of a glancing blow to me. It sure did. Side of the head. There's the left uh, left hook to the body. Now he's going to unload another body shot, and that's the one. Yeah, and that was a good shot, right to the solar plexus. In fact, there were two of them there. Stood up to the first one. The second one dropped him right on his face. That was legit. So our first fight comes to a quick end. We got more to come after this. Junior, Jimmy. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a time of 2 minutes 59 seconds in round number 4. Our referee in charge, Gina Rodriguez, reaches the count. The winner by way of knockout, El Surdo de Oro, Enrique Sanchez. Well, Barry, I think this is the best fight for Sanchez since he lost the world title to Nestor Garza. He certainly d defeated a good veteran here tonight, one uh, who usually can stand up to vicious shots, but when he got two body shots, watch this one coming up. There it is, left hook to the body, down he went. And Sanchez shows that, hey, he's still got something to go. And with Eric Morales having abandoned the 122-pound ranks and Barrera about to do that, apparently, maybe Sanchez can get a title back. All right, we got bonus coverage coming up. When we come back, it's going to be Joaquin Gallardo and Tyrone Ivory.